Hello and welcome back to Monsters of the Gridiron Podcast. I am your host, Veal. I'm here with my guys, Will and Swift. And we have a very special guest who has blessed, and we are so honored to have Mr. Jerry Harrison Jr., World Series champ, L.A. Dodgers official. We got so many questions from him for him. And he's also a hometown guy out of Naperville, I believe, right? Sir. Yep. I lived out there in the mid to late 90s where uh, before where there's just nothing but corn stalks and, and some sort of factories every once in a while. And now I know you've been back out there recently. It, it looks yeah. totally different from back then, I, I bet. Napier Thrill, as we still like to call it. <laughs> Napier Thrill. Napier yes, Thrill. We moved out there in 83, and uh, I think it was like 30,000 people then. Uh, it's a whole lot more now. It has definitely changed. Absolutely. How you how you enjoying the off season? Wh- whether it's the Bears, whether it's baseball, how you enjo- enjoying your time? I'm enjoying it. You know, I know it's uh, baseball's really now starting to get kicked off. I know I think the, the White Sox and Cubs reported, uh, I think a couple days ago, I think pitchers and catchers reported uh, a few days ago, and the position players are rolling in. For us, we got started a week earlier because we opened up the season in uh, South Korea. Uh, so the first two games of the Major League Baseball season will be the Dodgers versus the Padres. So that should be exciting. So we're kind of ramping up spring training. But listen, I know this is the Bears, and I'm excited to talk about the Bears and what uh, they might do and what I think they should do. Yes, sir. So I'm going to go ahead and kick this off with the question that everybody wants to know. Uh, thank you for keying me in with the Bears talk. And then I'll pass it over to Will so he can go ahead and hand you some questions as well. How long have you been a Bears fan? I've been a Bears fan since we moved out to uh, Naperville when I was uh, eight years old. Uh, and Walter Payton was the guy. So as soon as we moved out there, turned on the TV and watching the Bears, uh, Walter Payton was mesmerizing. So he was my favorite uh, player to this day, still my favorite player. And we got a chance to see Walter Payton run that football and occasionally throw the football. <laughs> uh, he was just uh, – just must see TV. So watching Walter Payton, uh, early eighties. And then obviously when they went on to the Super Bowl in 85 to this day, I still think that's the best defense, uh, that ever existed. The 85 bears. Uh, so growing up, I've always been since I was seven, eight years old mm-hmm. to now, I was always a diehard bears fan. Um, and Walter Payton definitely fueled my, uh, passion for the bears. Absolutely. You sound like all of us. Most of us grew up or at least lived through that uh, Walter Payton mesmerization of of one of the greatest, if not the greatest running back of all time. To me, like you said, he was multifaceted, could throw the ball, mm-hmm. could catch the ball, could run through you, could finesse you, could shake you out your boots uh, and can run you over with a power shoulder. So I'm going to go ahead and let Will handle the rest of this. Uh, this is your guest, sir. So it's your time to shine. I appreciate it. We appreciate it. Jerry, as you know, we, we know the million dollar, billion dollar question. And we're going to kind of say that one for the end uh, before you have to leave. Like at this point, you know, with all us being diehard Bear fans, you're a diehard Bear fan. How do you feel about the direction of where the organization's headed? I think the Bears today are in the best position that they've been, I would say so, since. Uh, Earl Acker, uh, Briggs was on, on the club. Uh, I really believe polls rightfully show when he first got the job, had to tear it down uh, and, and build it back up. I think he, him and Warren have done an incredible job. Because they had to tear it down, uh, the quarterback, Justin Fields, had to take a hit. Uh, so anytime I hear uh, somebody talk about Justin Fields' uh, record as a quarterback, is not a Bears fan, or they don't know the Chicago Bears. Uh, Ryan Poles understood they had to take two or three steps back in order for them to take six, eight steps forward. That would have taken some time. Yes, you would have to lose some games, uh, and your quarterback would not look look as as good in the process. I think Ryan Poles understands that. Um, 
And, you know, Justin Fields came into a tough situation and is now with this team is ascending. So I know we're going to talk about Justin a little later, uh, but I think the Bears being in this position, in my opinion, it's, it's a win-win situation. I'm in L.A., guys. Uh, I get a chance to see a little bit of USC football. I am a Caleb Williams fan. Uh, I have a Caleb Williams bobblehead, uh, Dodger bobblehead. He came and visited throughout the first pitch at Dodger Stadium. Got a chance to meet and talk with Caleb Williams. I think he's a great kid. I think he's got a, a bright future. Uh, but uh, I want what's best for Caleb Williams, uh, and I want what's best for Justin Fields. So it's a unique situation that I'm in. So I can genuinely make an honest assessment uh, because I like both these guys. Uh, I think these young brothers are, are going are to be special, and I'm rooting for both of them. See, that's awesome because what you just said is, is a perfect segue into the next question. When you look at what Justin had, had to endure over the past three seasons, uh, a lot of it can boil down to coaching. And with that being said, you know, Matt uh, Nagy, he was a lame duck on his way out the first year. He really didn't do much to develop uh, Justin. Bill Lazor, he did all right. But then Luke and um, Andrew Janoko, for the most part, for two years, they were trying to figure it out because, let's be honest, Luke Guess, he had, he had Aaron Rodgers, who we know was the coach, the quarterback coach. He was down at the GM making personnel decisions. So, like, Luke Guess, he wasn't developing Aaron Rodgers, nor was Andrew Janoko. So, with that being said, with us now hiring Shane Waldrum, I don't know if you had a chance to look at a lot of tape and what he did for, for Geno Smith, but what do you feel that he would bring to the table for, for Justin Fields, and we could throw Kerry Joseph in there as well as a quarterback coach because if you look at a lot of his tape, I think you're going to be thoroughly impressed. That That's from my perspective. But but what do you think, having a solid OC and quarterback coach, what do you think that'll do for Justin Fields? Well, you know, I think it's going to be uh, tremendous for Justin. But to get back to, to your first question, and you kind of basically stated it, and, and having friends – you know, being a, a, a former baseball player, we train, you know, with some football players, show some basketball players. I live in Phoenix and I live in L.A. So a lot of athletes that I come in contact with. And I, and I talk to some uh, former football players and a lot of fans don't understand that in football schemes are important. Development is important, especially for the quarterback. And when you come into a situation like Justin Fields did, he had Matt Nagy for a year. And this is, I'm not knocking Matt Nagy, but you got to remember, he's trying to save his job. So anytime you're trying to save your job, you're not going to, hey, I got no time to develop you. I, I got I to gotta win now. Okay, it didn't happen. He gets fired. They bring an, a, 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 another guy in Getsy who's supposed to be, he's now the OC, he's supposed to be Aaron Rodgers' guy. But as you mentioned, Getsy got Aaron Rodgers when he was already developed. You know, he's already a veteran. So, you know, Gatsy being a young guy, hopefully Gatsy becomes a great OC down, down the line. But I thought Justin should have got a veteran guy, a veteran play caller in his second year to really develop it. And also a veteran QB coach. He didn't get that. He never got that. In the process, they hire Ryan Poles, who I think is going to do an, do an incredible job. They tear it down. They trade a couple of our defensive guys, and we have no no defense. Our offensive line, Justin has never had an offensive line. And again, I'm a passionate Bears fan. I watch every game. He didn't have a weapon until he got D.J. Moore. You give him one wide receiver, and what did D.J. Moore do? Explode. Had a, had a career year. Think about that for a second. Now, as you guys know, as an athlete – as a baseball player, we don't want to mess with our money. If there's one position in sports that relies on another position with their money, they don't want to mess with, right? Wide receivers need a quarterback. They're passionate about a quarterback. If a guy is not it at the quarterback position, trust me, wide receivers are going to be like, dude, this ain't the dude because you guys are messing with my money. Get a quarterback in here that will, that, that, that will not mess with my money. 
DJ Moore, who's a veteran guy who's seen a lot of quarterbacks, who's played with a lot of quarterbacks, and he's seen a lot of quarterbacks, has been adamant about keeping Justin Fields. If Justin Fields ain't the dude, why is DJ Moore standing on the rooftop saying, this is my guy? Because he understands he's going to get me paid even more because he's going to help me catch the ball because he's that dude. If Justin Fields wasn't that dude, wide receivers ain't going to be clamoring for him. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So these guys understand that Justin didn't have anything to work with. And I know you guys have the breakdowns I, I, a lot more than I do. I saw a breakdown uh, a couple days ago where our wide receivers, and I hate to knock because a couple of these guys are young, right? They had a high drop rate. Outside of DJ Moore and Colt Komet, who's a tight end, the wide receiver group just – wasn't there. They had high drop, drop rate. I think it was a, the, the, the the second highest drop rate in all the NFL. That's ridiculous. To go along with a terrible, I, sh- I shouldn't say terrible, a bad offensive line that's going to improve. It's going to improve because I, I really believe Poles is going to concentrate on the offensive line. Jerry, you are smooth because everything you're saying is tied mm-hmm. into the next question. Like, like, real talk, everything you just said is spot on because – when you put everything into context and like true Bears fans that understand the game, they can see that either the skill set players weren't there, the offensive line wasn't there, the play calling a lot of time wasn't there after the first 15 scripted plays, and the personnel groupings a lot of time wasn't there based off whatever defense uh, we were playing. So with that being said, and you just mentioned some of it um, subtly, what do you see some of the needs, and I'm specifically talking about offense, do the Bears need to make in order to give Justin a better chance to be great at his job? I, you know what? You mentioned Justin, but, but any quarterback. you got to have an awesome offensive line. I have friends that play the, the, the quarterback position in the NFL, and they said there's nothing worse than saying hike, and you feel energy behind you because you, you don't trust your offensive line. You don't trust that left tackle. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Or you don't trust that, that line. I just saw it a couple of days ago. This is this is a fact. No one was hurried more after saying hike than Justin Fields. The only one who was hurried more was Geno Smith. Justin, every time he said hike, there was somebody in his face. And it was only because of his escapability, he was able to extend a little bit and give us a chance. So I really believe they're going to key in on the offensive line. Listen. I want the Bears to win. If they draft Caleb Williams, we win. Awesome. I, I just, I, I'm a Bears fan. You know what I'm saying? But as I look at it, if you're going to get tons of stuff for the number one pick, we have so many needs. You know what I'm saying? Here's another thing. Well, the Bears, how many chances do you get two number one picks in a row? Do you know why the Bears got the number one pick this year? Is because they passed on a generational quarterback last year in Bryce Young. By the way, roll tide. I love Bryce Young. Okay, but they traded the number one pick to the Carolina Panthers and got the number one pick again. They could trade away the number one pick this year and build the offensive line, build the defensive line, draft Marvin Harrison Jr., and you might get the number one pick next year. So what I'm saying is don't act like, oh, it's we got the number one pick two years wrong. It's, it's not because we went one and, and 16. We won seven games. We could have easily, if we, if we had a, 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 a better offensive coordinator, we could have easily won eight, nine, ten games, you know, this past season. So don't act like, oh, the reason why I get the number one pick two years in a row, we could get the number one pick three years in a row if we play our cards right and trade away the number one pick again and really build this team. I want to be the 90s Cowboys. The 90s Cowboys, you know who they he didn't have on quarterback? They didn't have Dan Marino. Mm-hmm. They didn't have Joe Montana. They, they didn't have... They had Troy Aikman, who was a Hall of Fame quarterback. Great quarterback. Troy, I love you. But he wasn't top three. But they had what? Dominant offensive line. Dominant de- defensive line. They had literally a guy called the playmaker, Michael Irvin. Then they had a couple other guys who catch the ball. And this guy named Emmett Smith, who was pretty good. So they had a team. And I think that's the way to go. I don't want to keep recycling. I don't want... If we keep doing this, Caleb, in two years or three years, okay, we need another quarterback. Okay, well, now we need another quarterback. Let's re- reset the clock. Reset the clock. Dude, forget resetting the clock. How about build the team? How about we do that? 
And then the caveat off of that, think about it. Okay, you played with Derek G. He was a great leader, correct? Oh, the best. Great. So leader. when you look at this current not 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 compare that to this current Bears squad, like who's the leader in that locker room right now? Justin Fields. Justin You know why? Justin Fields is 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 blatantly obvious. Guys, I'm telling you. Being around pro sports all my life, being in the major leagues for 16 years, being around guys that played in the NBA, being around guys that played in the NFL, guys don't just speak up about guys. If if they don't have anything positive to say, they usually don't say nothing. Hey, what do you think about Justin Fields? You know what? He's a great, great guy, and I wish him the best. These guys go into detail on why they love him. No player does that unless they – Love the guy, and they will go to war with that guy, okay? Derek Jeter wasn't the most talented guy. He wasn't. You know, he wasn't as talented as Aaron. He wasn't as talented as Kendrick Jeter. He wasn't the hitter like Tony Gwynn. He didn't pick it like Ozzie Smith. But I'll tell you one thing. You ask all those Yankee players, if we needed one hit in the bottom of the ninth inning, who we wanted to play? Derek Jeter. Derek Jeter. Why? Because he's got those intangibles. I really believe Justin Fields has those intangibles. When he escaped, they're playing the Falcons. And this is why, one of the reasons why the Falcons want Justin Fields so bad. When he escaped, that he should have been sacked. You go back to that play. He not only escaped, he ran for the first down on third down. He runs to the sideline, the Bears sideline. The entire team runs over there and grabs hugs and is cheering on Justin Fields. Bro, you don't see that, man. You don't see that. The whole team got up off the bench so excited passionate about Justin Fields. So that, to me, speaks values of his leadership. Uh, he's gone through the storm, and I really believe he is going to take a huge leap. Now, I hope it's for the Bears. But I tell you what, he goes somewhere to, like, Atlanta. My goodness, we're going to be like, two or three years from now, we're going to be like, why did we give up on this dude? My God, we were, couldn't you see he was turning the corner? And you got guys that have played the position – you know, I heard Rex Ryan. I've heard uh, other coaches, Hugh Jackson. I heard uh, uh, Teddy Bruschi, guys that know about winning. They're like, bro, why are you guys even entertaining about getting, getting rid of this guy? He got he got no help for three years, and now you got a chance to give him some help, and you want to abandon him? I, I just I just don't see it. So, so Jerry, how do you refute people that are saying that Ryan Poles needs to draft his guy knowing – for three years, that Justin was dealt a bad, bad hand. Because like you said, to me, I'm a real believer that the record is indicative of the entire team. When people try to say, well, Justin's 10 and 29, no. The Bears were 10 and 29 in those starts. Because like you said, watching those games, being there live, seeing Justin be Superman just for the defense to come and give up plays, you know, that resulted in a loss or a receiver dropping a pass or – a, a lineman giving up a sack, again, when you see and hear people say that, like, how, how do you, how does that make you feel knowing, all of us knowing that Justin has been dealt a bad hand? Like, put yourself in Ryan Poe's shoes knowing, do you think that if you stick with Justin, and, and it's two foes to this, because like you said, if Justin goes, we trade him to Atlanta or Pittsburgh, and he blossoms, I, like, like me as a GM look bad, and Caleb flops, I look bad. But if, even if Caleb goes off and be, let's see, a smaller fraction of Pat Mahomes, but Justin becomes Lamar Jackson, then hindsight is 2020. Like, realistically, how would you feel as Ryan Poles if, if that were to happen? Ryan Poles has a, a difficult decision. There is no question about it. I, I admire Ryan Poles. He has been extremely quiet. Nobody has heard anything. He has not allowed anything to be leaked. There's people that are, are on, on different networks are saying the Bears are going to do this. Bears are going to do it. Nobody knows anything. Nobody knows. It's speculation. And you know what? That's your job is to speculate. So nobody knows what's going to happen. So the one thing that I'm – that's been kind of quiet a little bit that nobody is considering – uh, and I'm sure Ryan Post has to consider this as well, is but what, what does Caleb's camp feel? What do they feel? You know, he's got some leverage. He's got some power. You know, I know his dad is is loves his son. He wants his best for his son. At some point in the near future, this may never happen, but it could happen, where they could say, you know what, 
I want the best for my son, and I want him to be in D.C. with Cliff because we know that if he goes to D.C., he could develop for three or four years. He could fall on his face for the first two years because they're not ready to win now. He can go be with Magic Johnson in D.C., and they could just develop. Whereas in Chicago, you draft Caleb Williams. This team now with the moves of the cap space, they're winning. They're ready to win right now. You got next year without question. Bears have to be a playoff team. There's no question about that. Okay, so do Caleb's camp decide? You know what? We see how they've treated as far as you know some of the people in the fan base, some people in the media. We see how they treated Justin Fields. Uh, I don't. I don't want that. I don't want that for my son. So I would like for I would prefer him to go to DC with Magic. So that way he can develop for a couple of years. They may sit him for a year. Who knows? Whereas Bears draft Caleb Williams, he has got to play day one. Has to play day one. So at some point, do do the Caleb camp do that? I don't know. I'm just I'm this is pure speculation. Um, because obviously, you know, we know that his dad is 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 very passionate about his son and wants what's best for his son. So do they do that? So back to polls. I know that was your question. I just was, went off on, on, on the Caleb camp. Polls has a very difficult decision to make. Um, if I was the GM, if I was the GM, I if I'm going to bring in a rookie quarterback, Caleb Williams is, as we admit, he's the consensus number one quarterback, right? If I'm going to bring him in, I want to make his transition as smooth as possible. So I'm going to bring in Cliff, Cliff Kingsbury. He's going to be my offensive coordinator. Why? Everybody knows being a rookie, it's so hard. Day one, being a quarterback in the National Football League, you're going to have to be going up against defenses that are elites, right? Even the 30th ranked defense is better than what you saw in, in college, okay? So... Let's make the transition easy for him, bring his, his offensive coordinator, and not only that, we're going to bring in a, a brand-new head coach. We're going to start from day one. We're going to announce to the world we're bringing a, a, a brand-new head coach. This is it, year one for the new coach and a brand-new offensive coordinator, which Caleb Williams knows very well, and we're going to build, guys. So give us two or three or four years to get this young guy up to speed, and in your three or four or five, we're going to – we're going to be tough to be reckoned with. The Bears didn't do that. They kept their head coach, interviewed Caleb Williams' guy, and said, we're going to go a different direction. That shocked me. That shocked me because I thought, okay, they're going to get a new head coach and then bring in Caleb's guy. They didn't do that. So I was like, why wouldn't they do that? So, again, that that was a surprise to me. Now you bring in – uh, the OC, uh, is it Waldin or Waldron? Waldron. Waldron. Mm -hmm. A guy that did incredible things for Geno Smith. Incredible things for Geno Smith. Mm -hmm. And if I'm him, I'm like, okay, if I do that for Geno, who is probably a, 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 a Mercedes, right? Geno, that's awesome. Mercedes, right? But I get a chance to get a Lamborghini? In Justin Fields, who is pound for pound the freakiest athlete quarterback in the NFL. Who's freaker athlete than him? Lamar Jackson is, can absolutely fly. Justin Fields has a stronger arm than Lamar Jackson. Justin Fields is stronger than Lamar Jackson. And Lamar Jackson's the MVP, rightfully so. So if I'm Shane, I, I get a chance to work with this freak in nature. So I'm just trying to put two and two together. That's my thought process. So I just think it makes sense that if you're hiring him, I think he, Shane is for Justin and Cliff would have been for Caleb. Doesn't that make sense? It does, logically and rationally. See, you knocked out two birds with one stone, uh, Jerry, because I was going to ask you about Matt Eberflus, you know, being in the third year and having to win and go to the playoffs now. You know, based off what you just said, as, if you were Eberflus, you would want to go with the, the proven commodity over a rookie because ultimately it's like I know Justin, I know his capability, his capacity, whereas I don't know Caleb, I don't know Drake Bay, I don't know Jaden Daniels, how they're going to transition to the next game. So this is the million-dollar question, 
Jerry, mm-hmm. if if it was you and you was over at Alice Hall having to make this decision, would you go with Caleb or would you go with Justin and why? Well, I think Caleb Williams has a chance to be a really good quarterback. I think it, the, it has been unfair to Caleb that uh, the, the, the national media, Bears fans, um, or I should say Bears fans, some, some Bears fans have said Caleb Williams is the next Patrick Mahomes. He's the next Patrick Mahomes. That is absolutely ridiculous. Patrick Mahomes wasn't Patrick Mahomes. I know Patrick Mahomes Sr. I played against Patrick Mahomes Sr. Okay? Patrick Mahomes Jr. was an incredible baseball player. They thought he was going to be a baseball player growing up, right? He wasn't the number one or consensus number one guy coming out of college. He wasn't. Mr. Trubisky was the number one guy. Everybody said he was going to be the guy. Can't miss. Todd Dixon. Mel Kuyper. Can't miss. Mr. Trubisky. Got to take him. Okay. Then if then after him, it was Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson lit up the, the Bama defense. God. Nobody was really talking about Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes was drafted by the by the Chiefs because he was raw, he was a freak athlete, had a cannon for an arm, and he played the position like a shortstop. Okay, and he didn't get the type of training his whole life, and they knew that. So we're going to sit him for a year. We're going to sit him for a year, and he's going to learn under Alex Smith, and he's going to learn under I mean. Is there anybody better than Andy Reid? No. You know, he's had Michael Vick. He's had Donovan McNabb. I mean, he's had so many different types of quarterbacks. So they sat him for a year. So if I'm going to draft Caleb Williams, if we draft Caleb Williams, I hope he sits. I really do. If the Bears draft Caleb Williams, I hope he sits. It learns the position because I don't want to repeat this process again and again. I don't want that happening. And I don't want that for Caleb to be thrown in the fire because we draft him number one, and then we take somebody at nine, maybe, probably going to be a wide receiver, okay? And we haven't built up our offensive line, and Caleb was in the same situation, running for his life like Justin was. You know what I'm saying? And he's not the athlete, Justin. He's not as big as – Justin's a legit six, three and a half, 230 pounds of muscle. Solid. Okay? <laughs> okay? And by the way, Justin feels a great – baseball player as well back in the day. Played with my cousins, but that's another story. Caleb Williams is going to be, what, 6'1"? You know, we don't know what his measurements are at. He's probably 6'1", 210, 215. He's not, he's, well, first of all, he's not, he's not as big as, as as Justin. He's not nearly as fast. So I don't want to see him running for his life. You know what I'm saying? So uh, if we draft Caleb Williams, I would prefer him to sit, watch, learn, so when he gets in, whether it's game 10, whether it's game 15, whether it's year two, like Patrick Mahomes, then he's developed and we can have an incredible quarterback, okay? I, that, I think that's what they should do with, with Caleb Williams, you know? Everybody said, well, C.J. Stroud, C.J. bro, he, come on, bro. Who's C.J. Stroud? C.J. Stroud had weapons, man, and an incredible offensive line. And okay. an incredible coach, Bob Slow. He's an incredible he's a coach. coach. So come on, man. We can't. CJ Stroud comes what, once every 20, 30 years. You made a great point about CJ Stroud. I know a lot of people will say, like, hey, he didn't have a good offensive line. A lot of people, they might not know the Texans' offensive line, mm-hmm. but when you look at the advanced metrics, they were top five mm-hmm. in pass blocking. Mm-hmm. Yep. They might not be very good in run blocking, but mm-hmm. top five in pass blocking. So Absolutely. that's that's a team that has a ton of talent. So, I, like I said, I met Caleb Williams. I think he's a great kid. I want what's best for Caleb Williams. If he's a bear man, I, I'll get a Caleb Williams jersey and I'll root for, for Caleb. Uh, but I got to take my emotions out of it. Year three for Matt Eberflus, which is basically his last year because you never want a lame duck coach. So I got to look at Matt Eberflus and this is his, his last year because – Year three of a four-year deal, it's now or never. You got to prove it, right? You you, you got to you got to show more improvement. Re, you know, in, improve on last year. You have to get to the playoffs. So, do you do that with a rookie quarterback? Hmm. I, I mean, 
No, I wouldn't would, do it. Say, no, no, I, I wouldn't even consider it. So, so what's your consensus? Would you go with? Would you stay with Justin or would you draft Caleb? Okay, so you're gonna make the answer. <laughs> so I've already said the politically correct. I, I, was, I was trying to be not answer. Um, I feel. This is kind of like you know working for the Dodgers and 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 seeing what 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 transpired with Shohei Otani, where at the last week everybody was saying Shohei Otani is heading to to Toronto. He's going to be a Blue Jay. They have his private jet. His private jet is leaving Orange County, and headed to Toronto. So the whole baseball world is saying, well, he's going to be a Blue Jay. He's going to be Blue Jays for 24, 40 hours. It was all about he was going to be a Blue Jay. Everybody said he was going to be a Blue Jay at that short period of time. And then out of nowhere, it was announced, and it shocked even me, all of us Dodgers, that he's signing with the Los Angeles Dodgers. So I really believe there's so much smoke that the Bears going to stay number one. They still could, but there's so much smoke. Bears going to stay at number one, and they're going to take Caleb Williams. I just feel some team is going to be like, wait, 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 wait. We'll meet your trade demands for the normal pick. We want that number one pick. What do you need? And Bears are going to get all the draft capital that they want. There's 19 free agents, I think, next year on the Bears. They need a lot of draft capital to address the offensive line, defensive line, to to build an entire team. So I think a team is going to come in at the final final hour and give the Bears – the draft capital, so much draft capital that the Bears can't deny it. They can't. And they will accept those terms and the Bears will, will trade the number one pick. That kind of led into a question that I've had. Since you're an L.A. guy and especially a Dodger guy, you know, the connection is Magic Johnson and the way he swooped in and got Cliff Kingsbury. You know, the, everything is a war on uh, Bears Twitter. You know, any move that's made, anything that's tweeted out, is is dissected, you know, under a microscope. But looking at that, that almost looked like a blatant attempt at a last minute. You send a Magic Johnson, who is Mr. L.A. He's uh, Mr. L.A. Dodger, Mr. L.A. Laker, you know, sometimes occasionally at USC. Uh, we've seen Caleb Williams, you know, courtside, you know, at a Lakers game. And then Magic Johnson comes in last minute with Washington having the second pick, him being a part owner, and takes Cliff Kingsbury away from the Raiders. <clears throat> Obviously, to me, that looks strategic. You know, I'm not, you know, into all the theories and conspiracies, but that almost looks about as obvious as it can get. And I know you may not have that inside information on that, but as you speak on somebody swooping in on the last minute, it's almost perfect. You got the kid from Washington, D.C., the kid with a smile from Michigan becoming a star in L.A., becoming a fixture in uh, L.A. Dodger lore, uh, L.A. Laker lore, then becomes part owner in Washington. It, like, it's all lining up to be the Best story of the offseason if he does swoop in. What are your thoughts on that? First of all, that's a great question. So I was on the Dodger team. I was a player in 12 and 13. I was on that team in 12, 2012, when Magic and the ownership group, the Guggenheim group, uh, bought the Dodgers. Magic Johnson came down to the clubhouse and addressed us players right away. Let us know that we will do everything in our power to make sure you guys have everything you need to be able to perform in the field. We're going to do our due diligence in the front office, uh, have build the foundation through the, through the minor leagues, and we're going to revamp this entire stadium, clubhouse, and we're going to have you guys, we're going to have the best technology available. They not only did that, they went above and beyond. Uh, Magic Johnson was my boss, uh, still is. My, my boss, I've met him several times. He is an incredible person, man. Fascinating. I admired him. I, I played point guard as a, as a high school kid. Michael Jordan was my guy, as you guys know. I mean, growing up there, 
But as a point guard, Magic Johnson was my, my guy. That's the guy I wanted to be like as, as a player because I couldn't fly like Michael Jordan. So I needed to pass like Magic. I admire him more outside of basketball. That's saying something because his strategic plays he has done off the court is probably better than he did on the court. And he was a better bas- – I mean, he was an incredible basketball player, arguably top three of all time. Magic is so smart. You don't think he hired Cliff for a reason, man? Come on, man. <laughs> you don't think Magic knows that that Caleb and Caleb's dad from the D.C. area? You don't think Magic wants to get that, that the, the commander's fan base? We need to get the commander's fan base really back in this team. What's the way to do that? Get the home crown kid. Not only that, we'll, you get Caleb Williams, the fan base, we're good for a couple of years. We don't have to win for a couple of years because we got our quarterback and we're going to be patient with him. We're going to develop him. We may sit him to make sure we do the, this the right way, develop him. He can learn with a veteran quarterback, kind of like what Eli, Man- Eli Manny did with Kurt Warner in New York, like his dad wanted, right? If I'm Caleb Williams' dad and he's my son, that's the perfect scenario for me. I want my son to not be rushed. I want him to develop. He'll be home. Push, come, or shove. Win, lose, or draw. That fan base, the commanders are going to have Caleb Williams back. for Especially the first two or three years. Yeah, he needs to develop. We'll take, give him time. We're not ready to win now. Or, like I mentioned earlier, if the Chicago fan base, right? We got to win next year. Whether we have Justin Fields at quarterback or Caleb Williams at quarterback or Jim McMahon comes back at quarterback, we have to win next year, okay? Pressure day one. No time to develop, Caleb Williams. Bro, you got to be you got to be better than C.J. Stroud next year. You have to be. You know what I'm saying? Because you're generational. So, again, I, I just think, you know, I, I really believe they're going to go after Caleb Williams. Now, do the Bears play ball? I don't know. It's up to the Bears, but you can't tell me Washington. If you don't think Washington is, is coming after Caleb Williams, you're insane. They're coming after him, bro. They're coming after him. Now, do the Bears give it up? Let's wait. To, let's let's uh, wait and see. I know this for a fact. I, I don't. I don't know. I'm just. This is like hypothetical. You know. I know you asked me that question. I, I just. That's what I believe. You know. You. You line up. Strategically, if 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 the Bears were all in on Caleb Williams, but you got to hire Cliff Kingsbury, man, you have to. And if if we hire, okay, let's say we get Caleb Williams and he struggles a little bit, I'm gonna be upset. But why don't we get Cliff Kingsbury? That way, we didn't we could we were knew we we're gonna get Caleb. Why didn't he have Cliff there so he can he'd have the same offense? He know exactly what he needs to do. That way, he can just you don't have to worry about a lot of other stuff. You know, as a rookie, make the transition easy for him. I mean, same point there. Why would why would you hire him when we had the pick of the litter of the offensive coordinators? That that much was clear. We had the pick of the litter. We could have taken Cliff Kingsbury. We went Shane Waldron. And if you're going to reset the quarterback mm-hmm. clock like everybody wants, why wouldn't we break the cycle of doing it with the lame duck head coach? Why not bring in an offensive coach as well and bring yep. in Cliff Kingsbury? There's too much the situation where I don't see it either. I think too many people – are just dead set that we have to take Caleb Williams and they're not looking at the big picture of the situation. Yeah. You're exactly right. The head coach, you're going to be like, wait a minute. Hey man, you're putting me in a tough spot here. You, This is basically my last year. You're going to have me coach a rookie. I mean, After on, you man. had me coach a roster, you gutted. Exactly. Like, come on. And then gave me a lame duck OC and lame duck quarterback coach that cost us three wins last year. Like we oh, should have. We should have had 10 wins last year. At, at a minimum, we should have had 10 wins last year. And, and, and Flus did an incredible job. Once we got sweat on defense, our defense was outstanding, man. Once we got a little bit of talent, Flus did an incredible job with our defense. So Flus saying, man, I've done, I've done my part. Let me have Justin Fields because he's developing. He's ready to take the next step. You're gonna, now going to give me a, a rookie guy that – I just don't see it, man. I really believe that they would have reset everything. You're going to bring in 
a, a, a rookie quarterback, you bring in Cliff Kingsbury, you bring in an offensive minded uh, head coach or a new head coach to reset everything. Hey, you guys, we're starting over. You're starting over. So, hey, and I would have understood that. I would have totally understood that. I go, hey, guys, okay, I get it. Want to start reset the clock? Okay, get a new coach. Get Cliff, get Cliff Kingsbury in here with Caleb. It's a perfect marriage. They can hit the ground running, and we'll be back in two or three years. Cool. They didn't do that. That's 100%, man. There's just too much that when you look at the overall picture, why, why would you do that when Justin Fields is the leader of this locker room, when he's taken that next step? when he needs more help on the offensive line. We need help. There's so many holes on this roster. You know, the Bears, I guess they put it out there that they're going to make their their, their plan Correct. for QB before the NFL Combine, right? right? Either at the NFL Combine or before the NFL Combine. If I'm a GM, I know I'm in, in, in the baseball world. If I'm a GM and I'm taking – and I have the first pick of the draft – I'm waiting to the last second because I want to get as much information as I can on the number one pick. I'm not rushing this, okay? The only reason why we would cut it at the combine or right before the combine is to trade the pick. That way it gives me plenty of time. Okay, all the teams know we're trading the pick. Okay, give me your best offers. You got till the draft. Give me your best offers, okay? Why would you announce that? If you're keeping the pick, correct, right? Why rush it? If if I'm if I have the number one pick, bro, I got all the time in the world. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I don't have to announce nothing. We're pick, we're keeping the number one pick. What are I gonna say today? To say anything? And people who say, well, no, no, no. Well, you say that because you want to trade Justin Fields, bro. They have already have tapes on Justin Fields. You can make a trade with Justin Fields in ten minutes. Literally in ten minutes, you can make a trade for Justin. You can trade away Justin Fields. Hey, give me your late first or give me a first round or give me two seconds, one this year, one next year, done. Because they got tape on Justin in the NFL, right? Yep. With the number one pick, with the number one pick, now you're you're trading picks, multiple picks, multiple rounds. You got to negotiate. You got to really negotiate. So why would I announce we're going to make a have the plan in place before the combine if I have the number one pick? Bro, if I have the number one pick, man, see you guys. I don't even talk to you. We'll see you at the draft, bro. We'll see you at the draft. See you later. And the thing is, when I look at the cap, the compensation that we could get for Justin, hypothetically, Darnold went for a two, four, and six. Mm. Oh, and just, think about that. Come on, man. Think about that. So, so, so people are already inquiring about acquiring since the senior bowl. Because we were talking, we were talking to people, scouts and things, and 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 off the record, they were saying, yeah, you know, I, I would definitely go this route or hypothetically this route. So a lot of that stuff that's being put out there, uh, it, it has some validity and truth. But again, I think we all have the same thought process. When you look at the bigger picture and all the variables, you know, it don't, it, it just makes sense to stay with Justin, to build out the team. We got nineteen free agents. Get get this draft capital and start having youth infusion into this organization. Because when you look at the Green Bay Packers on offense, they wide receivers and tight ends are oh, either man. first or second year of their contracts. And you see how they look already with Jordan Love. you got to build through the draft. But we don't need to build through the quarterback. We need to be on receivers. We need offensive interior linemen. We need a, a, a move tight end. An edge, a three tech, like a free safety. We got needs that we can meet with additional draft capital right in the draft. Yeah, damn near mm -hmm. just off Florida State alone. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. another thing, too, remember that throw Justin Fields made in the snow, cold snow? He threw that throw on a dime to DJ Moore in the back left corner of the touchdown. Couldn't have thrown a perfect pass in the snow, in the cold. Guys, I'm in LA, man. I've gotten soft. I got oh, look at that. I got I got a little jacket on here. I've gotten soft. Okay. And I grew up in the Chicago area, right? I mean, I lived in Baltimore, I played for the Orioles for seven years. I played for the Nationals for a year. I was in Baltimore for 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 eight years. Or the DC area for eight years. It gets a little chilly there, but it ain't like Chicago. 
it ain't like Chicago. So you got to take into consideration. Can, can you play in, in the snow? Can you the make coast, the, the wind in, in green Bay. Do you remember that throw against the Falcons that he threw to Tyler Scott on a rope through the right. snow? And what did Tyler Scott do? Hit it. I'm talking now the corner was draped on Tyler Scott. Yeah. But a Marvin Harrison or a Roma Dunze, oh. they make that catch. So so DJ Moore has a career year, right? Yes. Career year. He he goes off. When first remember, this is just their first year. Imagine their second and third year and, and building that camaraderie, that connection, right? Now you put him with Marvin Harrison. Those two guys, you know who also gets better? Colt Komet. Hey, guys, remember me? You got Marvin Harrison on one side, DJ Moore on the other side. Komet is getting single coverage from a linebacker. Come on, bro. I, I mean, I'm in agreement with, with a lot of former players, man. They say, dude, build the offensive line. Go get Marvin Harrison Jr. Help your quarterback out, man. Build that wide receiver room. Build the line. Get as many picks as you can and build the team, bro. That's the route. And and Caleb goes off and does an incredible job with another team. Then Justin does an incredible job with the Bears. You guys, I, I'm going to say this, man. My whole life, I wanted a quarterback for the Bears. I mean, I, and I finally see it. I know – I know. The, let me go back. Corey Seager, right? I'm, I know I'm jumping. Corey Seager was drafted first – was a first pick for the for the Dodgers. He was 18, 19 years old. Scouts are telling me, some scouts are telling me he's a third base. He's a third baseman. Developed the short. I, I saw him at 19. I go, man, he's going to be a shortstop. Leave him alone. Let him develop. Let him develop. 21 years old. He's, he's a third base. He's a third base. He can't play shortstop. He won't play shortstop for the Dodgers. Develops, develops, develops. Now he led the Dodgers to a championship. Now he led the Rangers to a championship in Texas as a shortstop. He's now one of the best shortstops in the game of baseball. And I saw it firsthand at 18, 19, 20 years old for three or four years. Everybody was telling me he's a third baseman. His fifth year, everybody, he's a third baseman. He can't play shortstop. Now he's an MVP, World Series MVP, two-time World Series champion as a shortstop. I see a lot of similarities of Justin Fields and Corey Seager. Very similar type of demeanor, stature. Corey Seager, 6'4", Justin Fields, 6'4". People are hating on him, hating on him, blew up in the big league. It takes sometimes guys a little longer. Whether it's two years, three years, four years, it's coming. It's coming with Justin Fields. I really believe that. And I really feel that we finally have a guy we can build around. It's taken decades. It's taken decades. We didn't give him the support he needed the first three years. We didn't. Give him that support. And give him some talent, and he's going to blow up. Well, and, and that's the key thing you just said. You know, he's been here three years, and he really hasn't had consistent coaching to develop him. Because, like you said, with Corey, I go to Arlington. He get the key to the city in Arlington, Texas. Huh. <laughs> so, 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 Justin, with the right development, coaching, you're, you're right. He's primed and ready. But if you got one coordinator coming in, yeah, come you on, talk about Terry Joseph, right? Uh huh. Right. He's probably arguably the best QB coach. You would say so, right? Uh huh. Um, you don't think he'd want to work with a guy like Justin Fields? Hands down. Rocket of the room? Absolutely. If I can do this, 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 and actually coach him, man, he could be this. Everybody sees the talent. Everybody sees the talent. Even the biggest Justin haters, yeah, he's talented, he's a freak athlete, but he doesn't have the right footwork. Well, now Kerry Joseph's here. Oh, we're going to correct that. Yeah, but he, he, we got Waldron here. We got an awesome coordinator. Now you get these coaches in place with a freak athlete like Justin Fields. He literally could become a Superman type quarterback. And don't forget Thomas Brown. He's the passing coordinator that we just got from um, the Panthers. So he's good at the anticipation, all the stuff that they say that Justin is weak at, they're going to really hammer that stuff out. And I'm telling you, Justin's going to blow up. Bill, you got anything else you want to add? Because I know Jerry got to go here shortly. Yeah, I, gotta, yeah, I, gotta I just me. wanted to come off that that last point where he said, you know, which will be better, which will look better. You know, you grabbing a Justin Fields with all this talent, 
you helping to fix all his mistakes and things of that nature, that could get you that next level job. If they stick with Everflus because you all were successful next year's runs of, of quarterbacks after they seen you do uh, fix Geno Smith and Drew Locke, and then you come to Justin Fields and you fix him, the next step is up. So I kind of looked yeah. at it that way too. Like, which one would be better for Shane Waldron? He came, he comes mm-hmm. to Chicago and they draft Caleb Williams. Guess what every fan is going to say? What did they say about Stroud? He's generational. Guess what? Mm-hmm. Right. What are they saying about Stroud? Man, Stroud came in and took a three and 14 team. You don't hear very much, especially from fans, maybe from some media. You never hear any, anything about the offensive coordinator. You never hear them praise and say, oh, man, he took that team. He helped that offense. He uh, got that. Uh, I think Swift spoke about the offensive line a little earlier about how, you know, how they rank and and, uh, and things of that nature. And people never give that credit. And to me, I feel like with Shane, if he fixes Justin Fields as opposed to bringing in Caleb Williams in, he's not going to get no credit for that. He's generational. No. He's awesome. He's we knew this was it. We he could do this under any coordinator. They could have kept Luke Getzey. Yeah. You know, yeah. he we're looked, gonna hear he all looked, of that. You know who they give credit to? They'll give credit to Cliff Kingsbury. Cliff developed him, not you, Shane. Cliff developed him. Yeah, so right. I, I agree. You're I agree right. with you. You know, so, so, so Bill, 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 and think about this, Bill and Jerry. Shane yeah. wants to be a head coach, right? What, what's the best ride of being a head coach? And then Kerry gets a promotion. He becomes the offensive coordinator. Stay with the Bears once Shane becomes the head coach. So now Justin has continuity. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. So, you guys, I, I hate to run. I got to uh, get on the Dodgers show. So, I got to yep, show you. Sure. But listen, we're Bears fans. We want what's best for the Bears. Um, you know, I've been so impressed with the way Justin Fields has handled this. Uh, this situation, uh, and I, I wish him the best. I hope it's with the with the Bears. I really believe uh, that I think something good is going to happen really soon. But if not, it, it'll be Caleb. And if it's Caleb, I'm going to cheer him on uh, because we're Bears fans. And all this, all this Bears Twitter has been hate this. You got to hate this guy. That's absolutely insane. I hate seeing that. We're Bears fans, man. We want what's best for the Bears. We don't, we don't knock our quarterback. We don't knock Justin at all. If Justin gets traded and we get Caleb, we're going to praise Caleb, but we're not going to ridicule Justin. That's, that's insane. You know, and I, I hate seeing that on Twitter, man. So, you know, we want what's best for the Bears. We're always going to cheer on the Bears, and, and uh, I can't wait to this is over, and, and I can't wait for the season to start. Absolutely, sure. brother. Absolutely. Well, go ahead and wrap us up, Will. Hey, hey, Jerry, it was a pleasure, and we're looking forward to you uh, coming on some more shows, with her, because you, you brought some great energy and enthusiasm and some great logical, rational reasoning. So, hey, hats off to you, my brother. I appreciate you, and uh, I hope the Dodgers have a great season as well. Absolutely. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. Anytime. I loved it. All right, brother. Sure. Appreciate you, too. Yep. See you, Jerry. Nice to meet you, man. Take care. All right. We want to thank everybody else for joining us on behalf of Swift and Will Bear Down.